Well, let's talk about the book of Revelation. Uh, at Stillwater's Church, we're going through the book of Revelation, and we're in this series on Sunday morning called The Lamb, the Lion, and the Warrior King, and it's about Jesus Christ, and we're seeing uh, through the lens that Jesus wins that everything in the book of Revelation must be interpreted through the lens of Jesus Christ. It's about a person, not just about events, and so that helps us understand how that the book of Revelation can be a comfort to you. A lot of people have told me even on Sunday mornings, Pastor, you know, this is the first time I've heard this book being taught from this perspective because when I was younger or before, I have always was afraid when I heard about Revelation. I was afraid of what I was going to go through one day. Well, today we're going to be talking about who the false prophet is. So we've been looking at this uh, on Sunday morning through the lens of Jesus Christ. And then on the supplemental videos, I'm answering some questions that you may have about the book of Revelation. So let's read in Revelation 13, verses 11 to 18. And John uh, writes this. He said, Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. In the last video, we talked about this uh, representing false religion. It exercises all authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose mortal wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And I just got to say this, that um, the devil will always try to imitate some of the things that God does. Uh, you see that in God, we have the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, three uh, persons in one God. Um, in, the, uh, in the devil's unholy trinity, you have uh, the Antichrist, uh, the beast, and the false prophet. And so he tries to replicate for evil. And he does this uh, not just in religious terms, but he also does this with good things. He tries to make it um, something that it's not. All right, so uh, it's it's very common that this happens. And so, uh, and it goes on to say, and it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. And it also it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or on the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is, the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. So when it comes to identifying the beast, the false prophet, and the Antichrist, there are many possibilities. And once again, I have tried to give you uh, in these supplemental videos some different perspectives. And so there are legitimate Bible-believing strong Christians that will have different opinions about how do you interpret the book of Revelation. So uh, don't divide over those details, uh, but unite in that we know that Jesus wins, okay? We know that in the end, God judges uh, evil and he brings justice. And in the end, we get to go to heaven and spend eternity with Jesus Christ, which is incredible when we think about it. So, um, so each interpretation depends on what view of eschatology that you hold. Now, as I mentioned and discussed before, there are, previous, there are many different viewpoints. And as a quick reminder, the main views are preterist, which holds that all or most of the prophecies happened in the first century when this was written. The historical, which sees most of the prophecies as already having been fulfilled and some still in the future. The futurist, which is pretty self-explanatory, and then the idealist or the allegorical, um, which sees all of this merely as allegory, um, 
it sees this as metaphor and and that it's you know teaching some truth but it's not actual events that happen and then of course a very popular one today which is the dispensationalist view which sees the rapture then the tribulation then the second coming of Jesus Christ and the judgment uh, seat and uh, or the great white throne judgment and then we go into eternity uh, you know after the millennial reign so let me just tell you this what we know for certain about uh, the false prophet we know for certain that the beast, the false prophet, and the Antichrist form the unholy trinity. Okay, I already mentioned how the devil tries to uh, replicate what God does, but in an evil way. Uh, we also know that these three combine to form evil government, evil false religion, and all anti-God, anti-Christ sentiments. And so... When, for example, the Bible tells us in some of the letters that um, there will be many antichrists. It's not talking about necessarily the book of Revelation, but anything that is antichrist, anything that does not see him as the son of God who became human and was 100% human and 100% God, that he was without sin, that he became our federal head, if you will, as a, as a human being died in our place and uh you know because he could not die as god god is spirit they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth and so jesus the second person of the trinity became human so that he could die and he lived a perfect life he fulfilled the law that we failed to keep he fulfilled all of what god had told us to do he never sinned and then of course uh he resurrected from the grave and so um Anything that teaches um, anything other than the gospel through Jesus Christ by faith alone, in him alone, is anti-Christ. Now, you can take false religions. You can take cults. Uh, they're all anti-Christ. And then, of course, uh, evil that opposes God and opposes um, the gospel, that is anti-Christ as well. So we know that these are anti-Christ. Uh, God will judge all three of these and will put them into the lake of fire. And you ought to be thankful for that. Uh, one day, all justice is going to come to a head and God is going to put the devil and the false prophet and the antichrist and the beast, all of this that it represents evil government, sin, uh, anti-God, anti-Christ sentiment, it's all going to be put into the lake of fire. And that's God's final judgment. Now, according to your viewpoint, okay, the, the beast, the false prophet, and the Antichrist could be three different literal people, could be, uh, or they could be figurative of evil government, false religions, and cosmic evil, okay, the, according to your uh, interpretation, like I said, preterist or uh, dispensationalist or, or whatever. Uh, or they could represent real governments, people, and religions in the past. Okay, So what does uh, this represent? Well, it could be real people that uh, come during a seven-year period of tribulation that we read about. Uh, it could be that these are uh, real people from real governments that have already been judged in the past. Uh, it could be figurative of all anti-God, anti-Christ, evil government, and, and etc. Okay, what we do know is this: no matter what your interpretation is, that God defeats them. Jesus wins, and so you can rest in knowing that God will defeat them and judge them. Dragons and beasts uh, in the Old Testament, in particular, were symbolic of evil, and so you can even find in the Book of Job that. Uh, he refers to behemoth and leviathan, and both of these were soundly defeated and destroyed by God. And so um, I happen to believe that in the book of Job, uh, that these are probably real animals, probably dinosaurs, that God um, used as an example to show his power and how that mankind is weak and that we must trust in God. So, uh, but nevertheless, 
um, God destroyed them. Thank you for watching today. Hope you'll join us this Sunday. I love you. Have a great day, and we'll see you this weekend.